Who are some women that often get overlooked in history but had major contributions to society? Frances Aldham Kelly. She stopped thalidomide from getting widespread use in North America and saved countless children from life-altering birth defects. Edit, Kelsey, not Kelly. This is so cool. I had a high school English teacher who was a thalidomide baby. She was very traditionally beautiful, but her right arm was tiny with only three fingers. Not that it ever slowed her down. She was right-handed and wrote with the three-fingered hand. She was, and still is, one of the most extraordinary, outgoing, dynamic, talented and intelligent people I've ever met. She made a massive impact on so many students in her life. Edit, by the way, I don't mean to diminish Francis Aldham Kelly's impact just because my teacher was one of the more fortunate thalidomide victims. I'm sure my teacher would be the first to sing Kelly's praises from the rooftops. In 1952 DR. Virginia Apgar developed a quick, easy 5-point test that summarizes health of newborns and determine those needing emergency assistance. The Apgar score is now given to practically every newborn and helped save countless young lives and reduce infant mortality. Sandra Ford, the drug technician who first brought attention to what would become the AIDS epidemic. She knew something was up when she began receiving unusually high numbers of requests for pentamidine, an antibiotic reserved for treating pneumocystis pneumonia in seriously ill, immunocompromised patients. The patients it was being requested for were gay men who had been otherwise healthy. Oh and also back then it was called GRID not AIDS it stood for gay related immunodeficiency whereas AIDS stands for acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. The more you know. Inga Lehmann was a Danish seismologist. She discovered P waves, waves that reflect off of the inner core, confirming that the Earth has a solid inner core and a liquid outer core. DR. Georgina Seeger Jones DR. Jones single handedly organized the field of gynecological endocrinology. While at Johns Hopkins with her husband, DR. Howard Jones and doctors. Robertson stepped toe, she devised the hypothesis of follicular hyperstimulation, which produced more than one egg per cycle. Her later discoveries led to increases in viability of in vitro fertilization. Per Wikipedia, as a resident at Johns Hopkins, she discovered that the pregnancy hormone HCG was manufactured by the placenta, not the pituitary gland as originally thought. This discovery led to the development of many of the early over-the-counter pregnancy test kits currently available. On 1949, Jones made the first description of luteal phase dysfunction and is credited to be the first in using progesterone to treat women with a history of miscarriages, thus allowing many of them to not only conceive, but to deliver healthy babies she also served as a dean of the College of Pontifical Sciences, advising the Vatican of matters of gynecology and conception. Her husband always said she's the smarter one. She was also a great friend. DR. Mona Hanaratisha. She is the Dean of Medicine at Hurley Children's Hospital in Flint, MI. She saw that children were having elevated lead levels, L's, outside the normal range. She contacted the Genesee Department of Health, who at first dismissed her claim then sent her obfuscated data to make it look like the elves were completely within normal trends. She grew frustrated at this, so she called a team of epidemiologists from Uva, her alma mater, to find the source of the lead. Lo and behold, she found that the water in multiple zip codes was contaminated with lead. She informed the Genesee Department of Health again, who brushed her off. She then said frick it and held a major press conference where she announced on air that the water in Flint wasn't safe and to come to the hospital to get your child tested and to pick up supplies of water and liquid infant formula. If she saved thousands of children from the permanent effects of lead poisoning. Edit 1. Thanks for the awards edit 2. It was VT, not Uva. Apologies to all the VT alumni who DM'd me about it. The Allied Codabrickers at places like Bletchley Park during World War II. They worked incredibly long, tedious, 
and stressful hours and were a major contributor to the war effort and military intelligence, but their work didn't even receive official recognition from the British government until 2009, 64 years after the war ended. Marie Tharp, she created the first map of the ocean floor, which led to the discovery of tectonic plates and the theory of continental drift. Claudette Colvin was the person who refused to get up from her bus seat during the Jim Crows in America. But she was a young woman who was pregnant out of wedlock at the time, and the black leaders decided she was not a good image of an activist. So they handpicked Rosa Parks to do the same. Elsie McGillack a queen of the Harrigans, she was the world's first female to earn aeronautical engineering degree. The two major things she did was, she designed the Maple Leaf Trainer LL and she was to look over manufacturing operations at a Canadian factories that built the Hawker Hurricane. Henrietta Lacks. She saved millions of lives and made a critical contribution to the world of medicine, but unless you're in the medical field, you've probably never even heard her name. Henrietta Lacks was a young, black, mother of five when she died in 1951 after being diagnosed with an aggressive cervical cancer at Johns Hopkins. Dr. George G was working at Hopkins at the time, trying to culture cells in the laboratory. Lax cells were among dozens sent to his lab, but they were the first to ever survive and grow. Her cells, a unique and aggressive type, were later described as one in three billion. Scientists called these resilient cells ELA. Taking first two letters of Henrietta and Lax, HeLa cells were used to test the polio vaccine, develop in vitro fertilization, and several chemotherapy drugs among hundreds of medical advances. Grown and sold around the world, Lax's legacy lived on in her cells, they have traveled to space, they have been embedded in a nuclear bomb. But for decades, the Lax family had no idea. Daphne Oram first ever composer to produce electronic sound. She pioneered electronic music and lead the path for music today. She even wrote a piece called Still Point that she was never able to perform live because of zism by her peers and she never heard it live before she died. But it was performed for the first time in 2018 using a replica of a machine Daphne had created to electronically manipulate a live orchestra. Marianing. British paleontologist. Henrietta Leavitt. She was an astronomer at Harvard and discovered a type of star called a Cepheid. Cepheid stars all pulse at the same rate. That lets us know how far away they are. Because of her, we were able to determine how big the universe is along with many, many more things concerning its properties. King Tamara of Georgia. She now represents the Georgian nation and civilization VI, but before that, not a lot of people knew about her. And whenever she is mentioned, she is mentioned as queen, but she was given the title of king because she was recognized as an equal monarch, her husbands didn't have any royal titles. This is an undisputed fact in Georgian historiography, idk about western scholars, but whenever she is mentioned on the internet or mainstream, would it be Wikipedia or a video game? Like Civ VI, she is denied her lawful title and that just please me off. Nellie Bly. She was a 1890s journalist who was given an assignment to investigate the woman's lunatic asylum on Blackwell's Island due to accusations of the mistreatment of patients. She got in there by faking insanity and getting herself committed to the asylum, and when she was finally released, she ran an expose in the New York world called 10 Days in a Madhouse that exposed the awful treatment of patients inside the asylum. This was considered a revolution in investigative journalism. Also, she read around the world in 80 days, basically decided she could do better, and went around the world in 72 days. She was also an inventor, and was one of the primary journalists to cover the suffragette movement. She's one of my favorite historical figures who doesn't get enough attention. Edit, wow. Thank you for the awards and upvotes. I am grateful and glad to see all the positive comments. Bessie Coleman. She was a black woman who wanted to learn to fly. No one would teach her. She learned that the French would however, so she moved to France, learned French and how to fly. 
Then she came back to the States and taught whoever wanted to learn. She was alive same time as Amelia Earhart and got no recognition at the time. Cheng I Sao Ching she was the single most successful pirate in all of history. She led an armada of tens of thousands of sailors and 17 separate fleets of ships and held the most important tributary in China under railing for weeks on end before managing to give the slip to a combined force of Portuguese, Chinese, and English warships after being cornered in an inlet with two wounded ships and no way out but through. After this venture, she recognized that her power was beginning to wane so she decided it was better to cash out while she had the leverage, one of her fleets had turned on her during the period among other things, she managed to negotiate for literally all of her men to be given amnesty, be allowed to join the Chinese navy, to keep the stuff they had stolen, and for her to be able to keep several ships to be able to have a boostness in the salt trade. She then ran a gambling house and died peacefully in her sleep. Besides a freaking kicker story, she has also had some lost in consequences. Her absolute domination over the Chinese navy showed just how much the empire had neglected that wing of the military, and the British picked up on this. It was a big part of why they were so willing to fight a naval war across the entire planet at a time when even messages would take a year and change just to make it back. The opium wars were fought because of this, and the treaties that resulted are called by the current Chinese government as the start of the century of shame and are a major touchstone in the government's image of itself. They are invoked today when negotiations with the West break down as a reason that China ought not bow to outside pressure. For any Canadians, of which I am, it's on the level of Vimy Ridge in our national conception. Agent 355 we still don't know her true identity to this day, but that was the code name of one of the first American spies. Some historians dispute whether it was an actual person or just code for when a woman presented useful information. If that's the case then Agent 355 could be multiple women that had a huge influence on history during the birth of America. Belva Lockwood, one of the first female lawyers in the US and ran for president in the 1880s. For Scotland I'd say the Edinburgh Seven. Basically paved the way for women being allowed to get into university in the UK. Irina Sendler worked with others to smuggle Jewish children out of the Warsaw Ghetto during World War II. Irina Sendler. The lady that painted the lanes on the roads for the first time. She did it because she was almost in an accident one night and didn't want it to happen to anyone else. Mary Anderson invented the windshield wiper in 1903. As soon as the patent expired, it became standard in all cars. She attempted to sell it while she had the rights to it, but most manufacturers refused to believe it was a feature of value, and it is likely her being female colored their lack of enthusiasm. Not sure if this is major but this women https colon slash slash en dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash sylvia underscore stosa was my dad's aunt. First female chemist for Dow Chemical. Heard a lot about her but never got to meet her. Cecilia Payne discovered what universe is made out of. And don't even get a mention in textbooks. Eleanor Marks. Maybe overlooked because of her dad. She played an important role in British trade unions which forced the move from a 12 hour working day 6 days a week to an 8 hour day 5 days a weekend. Those extra hours to go on a walk, play Xbox, learn something new or just chill is a pretty big contribution. Mary Todd Lincoln. I know she went absolutely mad, which wasn't all her fault, but she was the one who really pushed her husband, Abraham Lincoln for those not from America, to keep moving up the political ladder, and ultimately shaped what the first lady of the US is. Not sure he would have become president without her influence. She had a lot more ambition than he did. Edit. Fun fact she also liked to bake. Look up her recipes, guys. Her almond cake sounded delicious and it was supposedly one of Lincoln's favorite desserts. Rosalind Franklin, Crick and Watson got all the glory, and even the plaque at the Eagle only mentions their name. Camille Claudel was a sculptor and artist who worked with Rodin. 
he claimed a lot of her work. Artemisia Gentler she was a woman painter in the renaissance with style akin to Caravaggio. She is nowhere near as well known as he, and she also painted a Judith slaying Holofernes painting. These are very brief overviews of what I remember from art school. Lots of talented women tucked away beneath the male gaze of art and history. Sister Rosetta Tharp she was super influential to early rock musicians like Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis and so many more. Johnny Cash even said that she was his favorite singer and she was also one of the first to play around with heavy distortion on her electric guitar. She's called by some the godmother of rock and roll but I guarantee you that the average person has never heard of her. Edit. Here's a cool compilation of some of her guitar solos from film so you can see how much she rocks https colon slash slash yahtu dot be slash gele 5 rj underscore txu. Cecily Saunders deserves the reputation Mother Teresa has. She basically invented hospice care. Before her, doctors used to just abandon incurables to die with no palliative care. Cecily Saunders arguably eliminated more useless suffering than anyone ever. Hedy Lamar. Also today's her birthday. Frances Perkins. She was the first female cabinet member in the US. She was appointed by FDR and played a key role in the New Deal as well as working for better working conditions, child labor laws and women's rights. Hypatia made the astrolabe. Then was skinned olive by Christians also the circular saw was invented by a woman. Thank you, woman whose name I do not know. Anna Connolly invented the fire escape in 1887. That same year, Josephine Cochran invented the dishwasher. Madam C. J. Walker developed black hair care products and marketed them through her business she founded which ended up making her the first female self-made millionaire. Globally? Perhaps Kate Shepard, who was the leader of the women's suffrage movement in New Zealand when New Zealand became the first country in the world to give women the right to vote. Locally, she is acknowledged by appearing on our $10 note, but I would say globally few people would probably know of her and the impact she has had for democracies across the world. Grace Hopper. She's very well known in some circles, but not nearly enough. Might be late to the party but Harriet Beecher Stowe is an integral character in American history. She wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin, exposing the cruel reality of slavery to the American public. Clara Barton helped with getting medical supplies during the Civil War and then founded the Red Cross. A legend in my books. Carol K. Carol K., the first lady of bass playing. She played over 10,000 sessions, including albums from Frank Sinatra, Beach Boys, Stevie Wonder, and The Monkees. I can thank the marvelous MRS. Meisel and the subreddit for educating me about her. Michelle Mouton, it's just auto racing, not super important in the grand scheme of things but holy sh. She was probably the best rally driver and hill climber of her era and one of the best ever. She was also very involved in innovating all wheel drive racing and safety standards. And she raced in the group B class which takes a level of skill, guts, and complete disregard for safety that has never been, and never will be matched. Lise Meitner. She's a Jewish physicist that worked with Otto Hahn in research on radioactivity. She had to flee Nazi Germany, but continued on with her work in Sweden and helped discover nuclear fission. While Hahn received the Nobel Prize for Chemistry for the discovery of nuclear fission, Meitner was also part of that research. She was also offered work with the Manhattan Project, but refused because she opposed nuclear weaponry. The element meitnerium was named for her after her death. One of the most famous pirates to live was Anne Bonny who was a part of Calico Jack's crew. She was extremely skilled fighter and was feared by most. Virginia Hall has a building named after her at the CIA. 
She was an American woman from Baltimore who went to Europe in the 1930s, lost her leg in a shooting accident, then proceeded to become a leader in the French resistance and master of disguise, all with a wooden leg. The book A Woman of No Importance is about her and came out last year. May I recommend a series of short YouTube videos by Sandy Toxvi called Vox Talks. She is a delightful UK TV personality, and during their lockdown earlier this year she made several dozen videos, all about overlooked women in history. Emmy Nova. I don't understand what she did, but leading mathematicians say her work was groundbreaking, so I'll take their word for it. Ada Lovelace. Dolores Hurta co-founder of the United Farm Workers Union with Cesar Chavez in the 1960s. She was a civil rights activist and advocated for immigrant worker rights by boycotting white grape owners. Farm workers were exposed to insidious pesticides, poor working conditions and awful pay. Her determination has changed the landscape of working rights and influenced many to stand up against unfair treatment and discrimination. She has historically lived in the shadow of Chavez, but now can have some recognition because of her involvement in countless social justice movements. She is a civil rights icon and should get the credit she deserves. Henrietta Lacks Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth were both incredible women, but nobody talks about the National Association of Colored Women and the amazing support they provided to those women and the civil rights movement in general. That one lady that hand wrote all of the math it took to get to the moon. I forgot her name. Pretty ironic that I don't remember her name. The Soviet World War II female soldiers. The USSR used woman in the Second World War more than any other country. I feel like this, and Russia's involvement as a whole, is too overlooked in a lot of places. Edit, replaced Russian with Soviet. I am sorry for that. Big Mama Thornton. She sang the hit Hound Dog a few years before Elvis Presley made it popular, but I believe because of the color of her skin, she couldn't get as much recognition. I still prefer her version over Elvis https colon slash slash yahoo.be slash yohdrzw rpg. Sybil Ludington. Madam CJ Walker. She's finally starting to get recognition. Simone de Beauvoir was a French writer, intellectual, existentialist philosopher, political activist, feminist and social theorist. Though she did not consider herself a philosopher, she had a significant influence on both feminist existentialism and feminist theory. Excerpt from Wikipedia. Temple Grandin a woman who despite being diagnosed with autism at the age of 4 in 1954 when autism was a sentence to a mental institution ended up doing wonders for the livestock industry and is still around today to tell the tale. Livia. She was Augustus' wife and considered by many to be the main power behind the throne, as well as the reason why the Roman Principate formed as it did, which shaped history for the next 1000 years. HTTPS colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash chen dash in underscore w she is best known for conducting the Wu experiment, which proved that parity is not conserved. This discovery resulted in her colleagues Sung Dao Li and Chen Ning Yang winning the 1957 Nobel Prize in Physics, while Wu herself was awarded the inaugural Wolf Prize in Physics in 1978. In recognition of their theoretical work, Li and Yang were awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1957. 49. Wu's role in the discovery was not publicly honored until 1978, when she was awarded the inaugural Wolf Prize. 50. And Sexton's birthday is today, she's often seen as the mother of postmodern poetry. Ella Baker. HTTPS colon slash slash www.zindproject.org slash materials slash baker dash ella slash is one of the most overlooked Americans in the 20th century.
She essentially brought about local grassroots organizing to small rural towns and cities across the country in order to propel the civil rights movement and helped students create key organizations such as the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee SNCC. Modern American grassroots politics are a result of her efforts and her leadership. Hattie Green she might have been a bit overboard on the whole frugal thing, even messing up her own family, but she helped a lot of people. Even though she was known as the Witch of Wall Street https colon slash slash en dot m dot wikipedia dot org slash wiki slash hetty underscore green. Rosalind Franklin Watson and Crick basically stole her research and used it to discover the shape of DNA. They were awarded the Nobel Prize for their discovery. Once the theft was discovered, and she was given proper credit, she had already died from cancer, her work specialized in rays and she had been exposed to too much radiation. The Nobel Committee has acknowledged her contribution to science, but they can't give her an award because they do not give out awards posthumously. Astronomer here. The foundations for modern astrophysics and what we understand about the universe did not come from the preeminent astronomers of the 19th century, but rather a group of women called the Harvard Computers. This is because at the time only men were allowed to use the telescopes and Harvard was experimenting with the first astrophotography, and they hired women to look at those first images, and it then became the women who made the first discoveries about things like the hydrogen line in stars, spectral binaries. Two stars orbiting each other so close you can't see them by eye, and half a million variable stars, some of which were used as standard candles to determine the size of the universe. All years before real computers of even electricity. Oh and two of the women were deaf. Among my favorites I want to shout out to Wilhelmina Fleming who ran the group of women she started out as a single mom maid to the observatory director, who got mad at his male students analysis of the images and proclaimed my maid could do better and she did. She not only ran the group and discovered many variable stars and nebulae, she discovered a supernova, SN 1895b, that I studied in my own research published this year. Good science never dies. Oh and in her spare time she made dolls as a hobby and was friends with Andrew Carnegie's family and gave one to Carnegie's daughter. Trust me these are amazing astronomers. I could go on all day about them and all they discovered. Edit. I work at the very same place today that these women did Harvard Observatory, and have been lucky enough to get a tour of the half a million glass plates from this era, at the time you would expose on glass plates not on photo paper. If you are interested here is an example of what one looks like, from the 1950s link. Rejected Princesses is a website worth checking out on this topic. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment.